What is going on everybody, Willis Gaming here. We are back again with another Division 2 video. In this video guys, I'm going to be showing you my updated build, which I actually used to complete the raid. We killed all the bosses last night, and it was pretty much really easy with this build. Most people in my team had this build, and yeah, I'll be showing you the build in this video and all that good stuff. But the winner from last video's Division 2 giveaway will be on screen now. If you'd like a chance to win a copy of the game, I've still got a few copies left to give away. Feel free to leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below as I'll be picking a winner in my next video, but this isn't required. So, um, before I even mention anything as well, I just started my new clan in the division. If you would like to join, make sure you are in the Discord, discord.gg slash Willis. Uh, anybody is welcome to join, um, preferably if you can stay active, that would be awesome. Um, what level are we now? We're level 9 and I like started it like yesterday, so we're leveling up pretty quick. So if you'd like a clan to join, just uh, join the Discord, send me a message, I'm always online. And uh, we can get you inside of the clan. Obviously, make sure you're in the Discord because it's a good place to be if you want to form like a raid group and all that great stuff. It's nothing too much different from my last video, but there's a few changes which I thought I'd mention because they're kind of huge and they're kind of uh, more beneficial to you, I guess, if you are doing certain encounters. Um, so obviously, ARs right now are super powerful. They got like a damage buff. My AR uh, has 22.7k damage. It's the custom P416 G3, 40 in the mag, 750 RPM. I'm currently running strain and stability. Um, the mods I'm using on it is the damage to elites, 8%. The sight I'm using is the 5% grit chance, 10 in the mag. And um, for the battle, we got 5% damage to elites. There's nothing much to it. Um, I want to go for my secondary weapon as well. And I want to explain why I'm using this instead of like an exotic. Um, obviously, most exotics are just kind of there for their holstered perk. And yes, that can be good. Um, but essentially, you are kind of wasting your second weapon slot. You can run a chat box if you want, but I found this to work really, really well. So at the very uh, last um, encounter in the raid, the last boss, there's a part where a bunch of drones come out. Now, using a LMG for this is absolutely insane. And using an LMG for any type of damage in the raid is insanity. You do so much sustained damage and it's, it's so good. So I'm running the classic M60. I've got 26.9k damage, 100 in the mag, I've got unhinged and 15% accuracy, and my weapon swap speed is increased by 10%. Um, this is primarily my main weapon, I guess, for DPSing in the raid, just for that sustained damage. Yes, this, this gun is super good for ad clearing and just destroying the uh, adds in the raid, but for boss damage, I use my classic M60. Like I said, just for the sustained damage. We're able to output so much on Boomer, on uh, Buddy and Lucy, the robots, and even the last boss shooting the panels. This is by far the best weapon you can be using is an LMG. And then for just quick burst damage is definitely the custom P416 or any assault rifle with high rate of fire and high damage. Now, the things which I've changed in this build is primarily my um, gas mask and my chest piece. Everything else is pretty much the same as my last build, but I'll go over it anyway. Um, so for my gas mask, um, I'm running the uh, Richter and Kaiser for the 10% uh, hazard protection. This protects you against explosions, fire, uh, stasis, electricity, um, pretty much. Um, there's airstrikes and like grenade launchers that'll knock you out of cover in, a pl in loads of encounters. Um, having a bit of hazard protection actually helps a lot and it, it really does show um, and it, obviously you don't get one shot in the last encounter in the airstrike. I've noticed this as well. Just by having like 20% hazard protection is so much better than having zero. Um, so I've got 32% damage to elites on this gas mask, 2.5% crit hit chance and 10% damage to elites is always important. Now the main thing which I've changed with my chest piece. I've completely gone away from Unstoppable Force and I'll explain right now. So, Unstoppable Force obviously requires you to kill an enemy before it procs. Now, yes, this can be good if you're killing enemies left, right, and center, but if you go into an encounter where there's no adds, like the Lucy and Buddy fight, the two mechanical dogs, there's no actual enemies for you to kill in that entire fight. And that kind of makes Unstoppable Force uh, useless. You 
don't activate it at all in the fight. Now, I found that using Berserk is actually so much better than just running uh, a bunch of blues and limiting the amount of reds you can have. Like, the people who run, like, Optimus builds honestly does not make sense. Um, you're limiting your reds just for, like, a bit of damage on your weapon when you could be running, like, reds pretty much everywhere. Unfortunately, the raid caters to DPS builds. If you have a tank build, if you have a... Um, a skill build they don't work honestly they don't work at all compared to dps builds in the raid so uh the chess piece i'm using is uh the fenris group ab chess piece with 10 percent uh assault rifle damage nine percent critical hit chance and nine percent uh weapon damage and obviously i'm running berserk and once again i'm running insulated for the 10 percent hazard protection helps out a ton and the mod i'm using one percent uh weapon damage and four percent LMG damage for my secondary. Now, uh, this build, you probably guessed, is based around getting a bunch of crit hit damage and a bunch of weapon damage, just raw damage. And if you've noticed, like, I'm still pretty tanky. I've got 210k armor, which is extremely good for 12 reds and 3 blues. Like, just think of that. That's pretty crazy. And I've got 47k uh, health, which isn't that bad, honestly. Um, so yeah, the holster pretty much has my last video, 14% critical hit chance, 5% weapon damage with devastating, 3.5% uh, assault rifle critical hit damage mod and 1.5% weapon damage and it's obviously the wyvern way for 7% critical hit damage as well. Uh, backpack, we're running the 511 tactical for 5% uh, protection from elites, 6% um, weapon damage, 14k armor, 12k health, 10% uh, bonus armor and 10% damage to elites. Got 1.5% weapon damage and 3.0% uh, assault rifle damage. Now, this build hits extremely hard, like so hard. Uh, the fact that I've got 12 reds, 3 blues, and still 218k armor, I think is really good, to be honest. Um, the gloves I'm using is the Gila Guard gloves for 5% uh, total armor, 8,400 health, 8% uh, assault rifle damage, and 5% weapon damage. And I'm running the knee pads. Now, I'd like to get a better pair of knee pads, honestly. Um, it's kind of useless just having, like, uh, rifle damage. If I could get, like, a... I'm not sure what I could replace this with. Probably, like, a... Something that would just get... Yeah, probably another... Uh, this, actually. This would be really good. If I could get a Fenris with a red roll, I would then get 10% uh, protection from elites. That would be actually really good. But for now, I'm just using the uh, Overlord Ornaments for 10% rifle damage. Honestly, I'm only using it because it's got crit hit chance. And, uh, oh, and actually, no, I'm only using it because it had hard hitting. And then I put crit hit chance on it. And then, obviously, the mods here. And that's pretty much the build. Now, like I said, yes, if you want to, go ahead. Go ahead and use your exotic um, SMG, your chat box, if you want to. That's perfectly fine. Um, it's got 60 in the mag, it's got a lot of bullets, but like I said, what I found running the classic M60 is so much better than running, I guess, the chat box just for that sustained DPS. Now, obviously, yes, the holster perk, I know, getting a kill gives you 20% rate of fire, that's insane. Um, but if you can, try and put on an LMG and you can thank me later pretty much because... Um, the gameplay I'm probably going to be putting in the background is me just showing you how good it is at clearing the drones in the last fight, how much uh, it's good for doing DPS to uh, bosses for a long amount of time, the gas uh, chamber fight, the the dog fight, like, yes, you can run a assault rifle um, as well, but if you can make this into an LMG build, I feel like this would be so much better uh, than an AR build, but... This has been my build, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And remember, guys, to jump in the Discord. Discord.gg slash Willis. And if you'd like to join my clan, I've just started it up the other day. Feel free to send me a message um, on Discord. I'm online all day. And, yeah, just I'll reply to your message when I can. Um, one thing I forgot to mention as well. The Survivalist. I'm running Survivalist, obviously, for the increased damage for assault rifles, and I'm also running it for the distributed repair. So when you uh, heal, it repairs everybody. And obviously, the Mender drone is good. Incendiary grenades are really, really good. And obviously, the crossbow, the crossbow, if you didn't know, the last encounter, when you use the crossbow, it will one-shot the vents. 
Um, I'm going to be bringing out a guide probably early tomorrow, just before the state of the game, uh, for the last encounter. I'm probably not going to cover the other bosses at this point. I just want to focus on this build and the very last encounter, which is what people are, I guess, stuck on the most. If you'd like for me to cover the third boss, I will go ahead and do it. Uh, but for now, my main focus is getting you guys this updated build and obviously the last encounter, which will probably be out tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely leave a like down below. This has been Willis Gaming and peace.